did you get the racist guards to treat you with respect? You're in prison, and you said, I will only respond to the name Mandela or Mr. Mandela. You must fight the battle for dignity mm -hmm. on the very first day you go to jail. Really? And uh, that's what we did. We put our foot down and insisted in being respected, even though we're prisoners. And we eventually succeeded in that. Eventually, uh, I know they thought that sending you to the lime quarry and working on the rocks would destroy you, but it did the opposite. How so? Well, uh, I was in the company of great men indeed. Some of them are more qualified, more talented than I am. And uh, to sit down with them to exchange views, was one of the most revealing experiences I had. To sit down with those men and to exchange views, it enriched your own life. It fortified your morality. It gave you courage to do better than your best. The thing that was challenging was getting him to admit that he played the greatest role in the in the apartheid movement because he kept saying no it wasn't me it was all the other people and i realized in that interview with him that that is what true humility is that that's not just a you know like some people say oh no we've got to mention the other people's names oh he was insistent upon not going forward with the interview without uh without including all of the other people who were part of the movement. Well, I had said that you're one of the most humble, well, the most humble person I'd ever met. I will tell you that when Mr. Mandela arrived today, he uh, said that our producer met with him in the room and he said, what is the subject of today's show? <laughs> <laughs> and they said... <laughs> and she said, Nelson Mandela, you are the subject of today's show. He goes, oh, all right. He's so humbled that the very idea that he was going to be on for a whole hour was, um, was not something that he expected. You, you, you'd also said to me uh, one evening, you said, we made the brain dominate the blood. Our emotion said, mm -hmm. the white minority is an enemy. We must never talk to them. But our brain said, if you don't talk to this man, your country will go up in flames. And for many years to come, this country will be engulfed in rivers of blood. So we had to reconcile that conflict. And uh, our talking to the enemy was the result of the domination of the brain of our emotions. Okay, I'm still trying to understand though. You began the peace talk and you end up coming out of prison and there is no bitterness. How is there no bitterness? Well, I hated oppression. And when I think about the past, the type of things they did, I feel angry. You have a limited time to stay on earth. You must try and use that period for the purpose of transforming your country into what you desire it to be, a democratic, non-racial, non-sexist country. And that was a great task. This has not happened before nor since that as he was leaving the building, every one of the Harpo staff, of the 300 people in the building, lined the hallway to shake his hand as he was going out the door. And I walked him down the long path to the garage. And we uh, now call that the Nelson Mandela hallway here at Harpo, because he walked that path. And as we're going down the path, he was shaking hands. And we took pictures. And now all of those pictures line the hallway. Nelson Mandela, never before.